Greetings family, peace, love, and positive thinking. Thanks for joining my channel. This is Guru. Today's topic is about the famous Nefertiti bust of Berlin. The title goes, Famous Nefertiti bust is a European fake. It's written by Naomi Astral in 2012. She writes, Museums often display artifacts knowing they are fakes, and the fakes often look nothing like the original. The fake antiquities market really exploded in the 19th century at the same time Europe was developing their so-called sciences. The words science and scientists were first used in Europe in 1834. For thousands of years, scholars have been referred to as philosophers, mathematicians, engineers, and so on. But modern Europe was emerging as a world power for the first time and wanted to erase all previous knowledge of the past. In order to rewrite his story, they would create new sciences which would validate their new paradigm. The new sciences included anthropology, which would, not, which would deny the existence of the ancient races of man, where giants and pygmies would become myth, and new scientists such as Darwin would publish his origin of the species. All of these new sciences were designed to present the European as a superior race and to conceal his origins. It is no surprise that eugenics also became a science at this time long before the era of Hitler. Another note noted new science was Egyptology, the only time a, a specific people in his story has been given its own science. When you look at early Egyptology in the 1800s, most people would agree that the so-called scienti scientists were so racist they were unable to use scientific judgment during their studies and very little has changed since then. Not all scientists and researchers were of this ilk, and many, like today, do tell the truth, but the media suppresses their work. The fake artifacts industry serves two purposes. One is the phenomenal wealth associated with it, and the other is to provide museums with a manufactured, his story supported by a scientific community with an agenda. In China alone, one of its museums contained 40,000 fake artifacts. Family, I wanted to bring this to your attention because, as you can see with this European uh, bust of Berlin, that the bust is not even completed. Uh, if you were to see this bust on the other side, her ear, uh, half of the ear is missing and the eye isn't even completed. Whereas um, the uh, bust of Nefertiti, um, as I explained to you before that I am an artist, this uh, reproduction I created myself. Um, I painted the shell actually and then I added um, a gold nugget based a base to it uh, which is painted in gold leaf I added over 17,000 sequins and Austrian crystal jewels to this bust I also created the serpent for her to represent her pineal gland and the serpent also uh, extends to the back of the crown the way it originally did and I will show you that in a minute but family I wanted to share this with you because um, I remember back in the day when news groups were available and they were a hot thing back in the day where people would debate and talk about these issues um, I presented this bust of Nefertiti and the Egyptologists namely the Europeans were in an uproar when they saw this and they did everything in their power to try to ridicule uh, how it looks um, they tried to say negative things about it but as I reminded all of them they could not do anything better not even remotely close to it and uh, 
and also not only that but um whenever you do things of that nature um i do understand that it has to do with the insecurity within yourself so they were just trying to deflect and so uh the european trolls and uh all of you folks out there if you have something negative to say <laughs> trust me i don't care i know it's a work of art i value it it doesn't matter how you feel about this this beautiful masterpiece by the way is going to be placed on sale i don't know exactly when but when it does um i would say that if you're interested then i would inquire within I, i'm not selling it cheap um so you can hang that up miss me with that if i don't sell it then i would hope that it would be placed someplace like in the new african-american uh museum of art uh because it really is a beautiful art piece and again i'm going to show you a little bit more uh in a minute as you can see from the uh profile of queen nefertiti um the serpent uh starts from again from the front of the uh her headgear uh it starts from the serp uh from the uh center of her forehead or her pineal gland and the serpent extends its body all the way to the back of the crown which you can see and then it comes and it comes off of the end and that's the tail uh where I'm pointing to right there that is the tail and uh I also uh like I said I did create that as well uh to show an actual representation of what it should have looked like completed this is the back of uh the Nefertiti bust and uh again it's a beautiful exquisite piece of art and I'm very proud of it it took me over a year to complete and again it has over 17,000 sequence and Austrian crystal uh stones on this piece it's beautiful and here again is another profile uh picture and as i mentioned um on the uh fake that is pictured uh on my computer screen uh the european version uh on her left side there half of her ear is missing whereas on mine uh you see a full ear and you also see the full serpent which uh the fake that they have sitting in the berlin museum doesn't even have the serpent on it it's it's it it's just a poor representation of what african ancient egyptian muse, uh art looked like uh to the ancient egyptians this is simply it's an insult to their culture and to their history to represent their art with an eye missing with an ear missing for that matter it, it's totally a fake so who was Nefertiti? Queen Nefertiti was the wife of King Akhenaten and perhaps a ruler in her own right and after his death. Nefertiti was little more than a historical whisper when in 1912 an exquisite limestone sculpture of her now famous face was unearthed at the royal retreat of Armana. It was said to be more than 3,000 years old, dating from 1345 BC. From the moment it went on display at the Egyptian Museum in Berlin in 1924, the enigmatic bust with a swan-like neck assumed a place as one of the world's most famous icons. That European fake bust of Nefertiti of so-called Nefertiti uh, has been passed off purely as a fake and yet year after year if you have visited the Egyptian tour with uh, King Tut or any of the Egyptian artifacts tours that they have I've been to several of them when they show the Egyptian uh, uh, 
bust of Nefertiti, they always show this European fake, fake bust. And at this point, family, black family, I completed a true, a truer representation of what Queen Nefertiti most likely looked like. Her name means the beautiful one has come or the beautiful or perfect woman has come and has prompted some scholars to think that Nefertiti traveled to Egypt from a foreign land. Others theorize that she was an Egyptian royal by birth. And if you look at her bloodline, you would see that her bloodline was clearly of Nubian or Ethiopian origin. There is clearly no way possible that Nefertiti could have been European and hence the fake statue that is clearly being passed off as an original and it's not. Essentially, nothing is known about Nefertiti before she became co-regent of Egypt with her husband, Pharaoh Akhenaten, who ruled from 1352 BC to 1336 BC. Family, we all know that the ancient Egyptians were of African origin. Their ancestors and those before them came from inner Africa, the same way the Nile flows it flows from inside africa and it empties into the mediterranean sea the eurocentrics will have you believing that the nile flows from the uh mediterranean sea into africa which it does not even if you look at a world map and you see uh where the mediterranean sea is and then you see the nile you would think that uh the river flows that direction. It does not. And family, I just want you to know that. It's the same with the cataracts, the way they numbered the cataracts. They numbered, at it, they numbered them as if the water flowed from the Mediterranean Sea into Africa, and it just does not. So I say these things to expose the truth to you, for you to use your own brain to know and understand who the ancient Egyptians truly were. They were truly African people. They had burnt to bronze-like skin and they always wore their traditional hairstyle of braids. The same traditional hairstyle that black people around the world wear today. Europeans they copy the hairstyle. There is just a, a um, what are they doing? What they call it, where they just copy what we do. That's what that's all they're doing. But traditionally, Africans have braided their hair, and hence, same with ancient Egyptians. Family, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you have a comment, please leave it in the comment section. I'll be happy to respond. Thanks for watching. This is Guru. Peace, love, and positive thinking. Until the next video, take care.